Hi LEGO fans, it's been two short months since we got the last LEGO Ideas set, the old fishing store. And now it's time for set number 19 from the LEGO Ideas collection. So today I'm going to unbox, speed build and review set number 21312, the eagerly anticipated Women of NASA. This fan inspired set definitely generated some mixed reviews when it was selected by the LEGO Ideas panel. So despite the mixed reactions when it was announced, this thing sold out very, very quickly. It became the top selling toy on Amazon before they sold all of their stock. And LEGO's online store has completely stopped taking back orders on this. You're not gonna see one of these for some time unless you've already bought one, or you buy one from one of the scalpers on eBay. If you keep up to date with the LEGO Ideas process, you may remember that the original fan-inspired design actually had five women scientists from NASA. That design was submitted by Maya Weinstock or Weinstock, and it included Katherine Johnson, an incredibly talented scientist who calculated trajectories for the Mercury and Apollo programs. Because the characters in this set are based on real people, of course LEGO had to have all of the approvals to use their image rights in the set, and they were unable to get approval to use Catherine's image rights, so decided to proceed without her. But we are left with Nancy Grace Roman, Margaret Hamilton, Mae Jemison, and Sally Ride. Cool! Just before we open the box, let's flip it over and see what's on the back. This is a relatively small set with 231 pieces and a 25 US dollar price tag. It's not the smallest LEGO Ideas set ever produced. That honour goes to the Research Institute from August 2014, which had 165 pieces. And it's a long way from being the biggest. You may remember the old fishing store, which I reviewed two months ago, which is by far the biggest LEGO Ideas set of all time. So what we're getting here is four minifigures representing the four women scientists of NASA that we're celebrating. We also get three vignette builds, one featuring the Hubble Space Telescope, another one featuring the Space Shuttle with removable rocket boosters, and the third scene of Margaret Hamilton in her laboratory recreating an iconic photograph which we'll show you a little bit later. I think that's enough of me talking about the box, let's get this thing open and see what we've got inside. Here's everything we get inside the box. We've got three bags of Lego, no numbers this time, an instruction manual, and that's it. In fact, I don't think we're even getting a brick separator in this set. Cool, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this put together. Today, this is gonna be a 25 second speed build. And here's the completed build. This took about 35 minutes to put together and it's a good looking set. We end up with three vignette models for the minifigures to stand on, one for Nancy G. Roman with the Hubble Space Telescope, one for Margaret Hamilton in her laboratory at MIT, and another one featuring a not quite a scale model of the Space Shuttle. This is probably one of those models you're gonna want to display rather than give it to your kids to play with. And as a display piece, I think this is spot on. One of the things I really like about Lego ideas models is that there's usually some extra information in the instruction manual and in this case each scientist has a page in the instruction manual devoted to their career and achievements. We also get a page telling us all about the fan designer Maya who is actually a science editor and writer. So first impressions are very good and we've definitely got some exclusive printed elements and minifigures to take a look at. So let's take a look at each one of these vignettes and their minifigures in a little bit more detail. Our first vignette features Margaret Hamilton. She was the director of the Software Engineering Division at MIT Instrumentation Laboratory back in 1959. This scene is a recreation of a photograph that was taken of Margaret Hamilton standing next to a large pile of books that contained the source code to the Apollo guidance computer. There are over 11,000 pages of source code in that pile, and if you want to, you can go online today and download all of the source code for the Apollo guidance computer from the internet. That kind of brings open source to a new level. Each of the scientists comes with a unique printed tile of their name. And for this scene, we also have a unique printed blackboard piece, but I'm not smart enough to figure out what's written on it. The stack of books containing the source code is made up of a simple stack of mostly two by two one stud Lego tiles. And we also get the all important Coke rack. 
But the star of the show here is the awesome minifigure of Margaret. Let's take a look at her in a little bit more detail. This is Margaret pictured in the outfit that she wore for that famous photograph back in 1959. And this is a tour of the force for minifigure creation. I think we've got almost every minifigure production technique going here. So we've got the jewel molded legs with side printing. I really like that squiggly design on the dress. If you turn around onto the back, you can see the, uh, the dual molding here with the flesh tone and the dark tone. Then we've got printing on the feet and we've even got some metallic detailing on there for the buckles on the shoes. She's wearing this very nice dress here with the squiggly print on the front and on the back. And I really like that hairpiece. That is so cool. Uh, I like the way it's kind of tied up here at the side. And that face is just the crispest example of facial printing on a minifigure I think I've ever seen. I think there's a little bit of metallic there for her glasses and they have absolutely nailed that smile from the earlier photo. I'm just gonna take her hair off for a moment and turn her over. You can see we've got a slightly more serious expression there again with the, the spectacles on or the glasses and that is a very stunning minifigure. Really, really pleased with that. That is Margaret Hamilton. The next vignette features Nancy Grace Roman, an astronomer and educator pivotal in making the Hubble Space Telescope a reality. The Hubble Space Telescope cost $1.5 billion to develop and launch and was famously found to be short-sighted when it was handed over to scientists who then started to look at distant objects. NASA engineers had to arrange a whole new mission on the space shuttle to go and fit corrective vision to the telescope. And it made me really smile when I was researching this video and I found that there's a company called Hubble selling contact lenses. But the story has a happy ending and with the Hubble Space Telescope completely repaired, it has gone on to capture some of the most iconic images of space ever recorded. That's why we have this fantastic 4x4 printed tile representing one of the most famous images Hubble has ever taken, this fantastic image of a nebula. Hubble itself is a great little build and looks pretty similar to the real thing. I really like that we get these solar panels which are 1x4 custom printed tiles. But my favourite part by far is the business end of Hubble, the mirrors at the back. This is where all the light is captured for those magnificent images and in this case Lego have chosen to construct it from a garbage can. And if you don't believe me, here it is. We've got handles and everything. That is the traditional Lego garbage can element. Before we move on, let's take a closer look at the Nancy Grace Roman minifigure. Nancy is another great example of how to do minifigures really well. Although she's wearing plain beige pants, the actual printing on the torso and on the face is superb. In fact, I really like the necklace that she's wearing there with this metallic printing in several different colours. She's also wearing a plain white top and cardigan with a little bit more detail detailing on the back. I think less is more in the case of this minifigure. The face is beautifully printed. That's really exceptional. And I think the, uh, the hair here goes really well with the character. If we turn her over, we've got a slightly different expression on the back there, which I think fits her perfectly. Now, of course, I'm not sure what age uh, Nancy is meant to be for this portrayal of the minifigure, but as it stands today, she is 92 years old and going strong. So really great to see Nancy in this set, and that is a beautiful minifigure. In our final scene, we have Mae Jemison and Sally Ride stood alongside their personal chariot to the stars, the Space Shuttle. The Space Shuttle was a phenomenal piece of engineering, and if you ever get a chance to go and see one, you really should. There are several places in the United States where you can go and see one. And here's a quick photo that I took of a flight used Space Shuttle, which you can go and see at the Smithsonian Institute near Washington, DC. You can go and see this shuttle at the Udvar Hazy Center, which is located just next door to Dulles Airport in Virginia. It's a huge hangar containing all of the really cool stuff that is too big to fit inside the Air and Space Museum in Washington, DC. But anyway, getting back to the scientists, whilst Margaret and Nancy did not fly in space, these two women did. Sally Ride was the first American woman in space and Mae Jemison was the first African-American woman in space. Sally had two successful missions on the ill-fated Challenger shuttle. Challenger had nine successful missions in space, but tragically broke up 73 seconds after launch in 1986, killing all seven crew members. Sadly, Sally died in 2012 after a brave fight with pancreatic cancer. The space shuttle itself can actually be removed from the stand very easily and that enables us to take a closer look. If you've ever seen the space shuttle in launch configuration, you'll know that this is hugely out of scale. 
It took a massive amount of fuel to get the space shuttle into orbit. The external fuel tank you see here pictured in orange was a container full of liquid hydrogen. In reality, this was significantly bigger than pictured here. And the external fuel tank was one of the parts of the launch system that wasn't reusable and burned up on re-entry. The SRBs, or the solid rocket boosters that you see on the side, were actually used in the early stages of launch to get the shuttle on its way into orbit. Those would be jettisoned later into flight and fall back down to Earth and be collected and recycled. The shuttle build itself is fairly simplistic, but there's no mistaking it as a space shuttle. It's also really cool that you can detach it from the external tank, and I like the way the solid rocket boosters can also be detached from the external fuel tank and fall back to Earth. Sally and May both come with these fantastic custom printed uniforms. It looks like May is wearing a NASA flight suit in that lovely shade of orange. And if I'm not mistaken, Sally is wearing one of those suits that astronauts would usually wear during the orbital phase of spaceflight. Let's take a closer look at both of those minifigures. There's no mistaking Sally Ride's minifigure, uh, most notably because she's wearing a nameplate that says Sally. And that is a beautiful custom printed torso there. Great that we've got a little bit of gold detailing for the zippers on the spacesuit, and of course the mission badge there. There is a little bit more printing on the back just to give some definition, and she's wearing these coordinated but plain blue pants. Again, the facial printing is beautiful, and she's got this simple bobbed haircut. If we take that off, you can see around the back, she does have another expression which looks a little bit more thoughtful and serious. And that is Sally Ride. The fourth and final minifigure made Jemison earn her place in the Women of NASA set in 1992, when she flew aboard the Space Shuttle Endeavour to become the first African-American woman in space. Now, an interesting fact is that the Space Shuttle Endeavour was actually named after the British way of spelling Endeavour, which is E-N-D-E-A-V-O-U-R. And that's because the Space Shuttle was named after the boat on which James Cook took his first voyage of discovery in 1760. She wears this fantastic NASA flight suit with lots of metallic detailing on there, lots of zippers and uh, places to attach life support equipment. If we turn her over, we do have plain pants on the outfit, but she also has a zipper at the back and you can see there is a ridged collar around the neckline on which we can attach the space helmet. And she does actually carry one of those in the set, so we do have one of those. Uh, she's got a very nice, smiley, unafraid face to uh, venture into space with. And if you can see that, yeah, she's got a little bit more of a serious face on the back. Always great to get those dual expressions so you can decide how to show her off. And let's just put the hair back on. And that is Mae Jemison, the first African-American woman in space. So that was set number 21312, Women of NASA, the 19th set from LEGO Ideas. I do hope you enjoyed this unboxing, speed build and review video, and maybe even learned a little something about the women scientists at NASA. I always think it's very cool when I can get an awesome LEGO set to build and learn a little bit along the way. If you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe for more awesome LEGO content. I release two new LEGO review videos every single week, so you'll always find something new or something old to check out on my channel. And if you want to check out some more of my LEGO Ideas set reviews, I'm going to put a link to the playlist on screen now. Thanks for joining me today, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next build video. 